recording. Okay, record, we are recording and I'm gonna share my screen. Um, what I'd like y'all to do is go ahead and get into Canvas. I'm gonna go over a couple of things on there. I've uh, got a few things set up on here for you that I'd like to go over today. So um, first we can go ahead and jump into files. You'll notice on these files I have quite a lot, um, but obviously the only ones that you need to worry about are the ones that are gonna be in the fall 2020 MEP folder. So we'll click on that and open that up. Um, I've got a couple of things in here to review before we get into actual class lecture. Um, I included the semester calendar on here for y'all. This is just the Delgado semester calendar. It gives you important dates uh, and things that are on here so you can have access to that. Uh, the important dates for us to remember right now are September 28th. Um, that is when your first uh, section of class is due and the midterm will be September 30th. So we'll review on the 28th and the midterm is on the 30th. Uh, but all other important dates, such as time off, like we are off on Labor Day, um, Monday, September the 7th. So all other days are on here. So it's just kind of a good reference um, reference for y'all to have. The other thing, the other kind of real important thing is this uh, right here on top, the CAD 214 course outline. This is going to give you an outline of how we're going to run for the rest of the class. Um, I have it broken down by weeks. Uh, first is the the Monday of each week. So we are currently in week two, August 26th. Um, basically between now and the midterm, all we're going to be doing is covering HVAC stuff. Uh, we'll have a um, commercial project to do and then a residential project. So we're going to do two HVAC projects, but we have the month of September to get that covered. Uh, after that, your midterm will be on September 30th, and it will only cover HVAC uh, information on there. Um, so you should be well prepared for that midterm by then. After that, for the weeks of week 8, 9, and 10, we'll be covering electrical. And for the 26th and the 2nd, we'll be doing plumbing. Plumbing's very, um, plumbing's very fast. Um, and you'll catch on to that pretty quickly. So we only allow two weeks for that. The rest of the time you will be working on your own on your final project. On your final project, you'll be creating a building. Um, well, I haven't decided if I'm gonna give you, I haven't decided how that's gonna work yet. But basically in this building, uh, you will be creating an HVAC system, a uh, electrical system and a plumbing system, just like we've prepped in the first three parts of the, of the class. Uh, be combining all those three into that final project, and that final project will be due on December 1st. Um, the final project will also take the place of your final. Uh, it's very thorough, so we make that count for your final project and your final and uh, your final exam grade. Um, okay. So uh, this is always a good sheet to refer to, so you can find out what's kind of what's going on in class uh, or what's up, but. Um, the good part about it is the only thing we'll be concentrating on up until the midterm is the HVAC system. So, any questions about that? All right, I'll go ahead and close that. Uh, next thing I'd like you to do is go ahead and open up um, this file right here. It's HVAC Mechanical. Uh, notice I have files in here for electric and plumbing. When we get onto those, um, we'll be having all your information will be within those files. So since we're just doing HVAC mechanical now, we'll go ahead and open that one. For the first half, obviously everything that's going to pertain to HVAC will be in this file. The new things that we're going to be opening today and reviewing are the first one, which is the CAD 214 mechanical lecture. So we'll go ahead and open that. This is a very long and kind of lengthy um, HVAC lecture. I'm gonna go through the top um, important informational bits right now with y'all. Uh, you can make notes as we go through this, but what, um, what you wanna do between now and the midterm is read through this and understand it as best as possible. If you have questions as you're going through it, um, just write them down and let me know the next class. 
but this is basically uh, going to be going over the main HVAC systems that are available. As you do more and more research under HVAC, you'll notice that there's not one particular answer to anything. There's not one HVAC system that's used for all buildings, be that residential or commercial. And there's not one calculation that's used, um, especially um, a more lay person's calculation in order to calculate loads and also duct work and things like that. Um, if you, one thing that you do want to keep in mind is if you do ever need to get a new HVAC system, the air conditioning uh, company that you end up employing, make sure that they process a manual J calculation. That's a manual, like J as in John. Um, we're not going to do that one in this class because it is a very, very thorough and exhaustive uh, kind of calculation. And um, I've the main thing that we're trying to learn here is the, the Revit program and just getting an idea how this all is working. So I've, I'm giving you a, an easier calculation that you will have to do in order to calculate those loads uh, for this class. But um, just keep in mind, if you ever do get a new um, HVAC system that asks them to do a, a manual J calculation, which they should be doing. Um, this will also give you an idea uh, of how to compare the information that you have to that calculation uh, when they give that to you so you're not going in blind or anything like that. So let's flip through this real quick. Um, here you can just see this is a obviously very complicated uh, HVAC system for a commercial building. We're going to be doing commercial first. Ours isn't going to be looking this thorough. Um, but you, this is just kind of good to give, um, start your mind working on how these things uh, should be looking behind the scenes, so to speak. Uh, this is an example um, of a BIM, um, the building, building Information Modeling or Revit based um, graph for uh, commercial building. So, the basic purpose of an air handling system. Um, is we have an air supply, we have our air handling system, a production room with defined requirements, which we'll talk a little bit about, and then outlet. So this is like your most basic idea of how an air handling system works. And this is uh, almost like a bigger one as opposed to the one that you would have in your house. Here's a home version of one. You can see this will look very familiar to what you should have in your closet, uh, closet or air conditioning room. Um, we have special little co alcove in our house for that, and it just kind of shows you how the air handling goes on with that. It's another view of it. Here's the unit. We have our return grill. This is where you change that filter all the time, and then the supply ducts. Very simple kind of circulatory system that we have uh, when it comes to a home uh, a home air conditioning uh, system. You'll see this used a lot, plenum. This is basically just this space. This is the space where that um, return air goes. So it's return plenum. And then the supply plenum is just that, um, that space above the air conditioner where that supply air will be forced through the ducts. HVAC efficiency includes selecting efficient air conditioning based on your climate, uh, selecting the proper type of efficiency uh, heating system for your climate and designing and sealing air distribution systems. We're going to touch on a, a few things on here, but when we're looking at designing a HVAC system, we're not just looking at uh, our particular calculations, that's our starting point, but you always want to take uh, into consideration the actual aspects of the house or building. If a building has very large windows in a particular room, especially like if you had those in your living room and they were, say, a uh, west facing living room, that's something that you might want to consider adding some more vents in there because if you just use like the same vents in like a smaller like one bedroom as opposed to a larger room you're not going to have that correct air circulation so it's also a number of vents that we want to think about and what's going on in that room also what is being used that what is that room being used for is it a kitchen um is that kitchen uh, a high performance kitchen some people like larger kitchens with big stoves well you have to think about the heat that that's, that system is putting off and you want to be able to balance that with the air conditioning unit that you're creating so your house is um, comfortable throughout. These are the different loop systems. 
Um, I'm going to just kind of go over these really quickly with you, but the um, best thing for you to do is to read about each one. Um, as you go through this PowerPoint, there's all these different types of heating and cooling systems, and each has their own purpose. The purpose of this peer, uh, period is to provide a method for understanding uh, the components of different types of HVAC systems. The premise of this method is that any HVAC system can be dissected into basic subsystems, and these, excuse me, and these subsystem systems will be referred to as loops, which is how they have these loop systems right here. And as you saw in that earlier example, it is just a consistent loop of air out and then air back in. These subs, uh, there are five primary loops that can be described virtually on any type of HVAC system. So let me, I'm gonna let y'all read through this at your own pace. You don't need to have this finished and read by next class but you do want to have some understanding of how these different systems work by the uh, midterm. For the midterm, are there going to be any uh, vocabulary? Uh, there may be a few vocabulary on, on this one. Usually this one is very draw. This class is very drawing heavy. Um, but when we get to that point, I'll let you know what the vocabulary will be at that time. We always do a review prior to any kind of quiz or exam. Okay. It's the same for the uh, architect class too, right? Correct. Exactly the same. Yeah, I find it best. Um, I like to give you a kind of a thorough quiz and that kind of sets you up um, kind of a study, built-in study guide for your midterms and your finals. Is, is it going to be like on Zoom where you're going to see us taking a test too or like? Uh, uh, yeah, we um I haven't decided that part yet on the written quizzes. Okay. Yeah, but I'll let you know in plenty enough time. There's Proctor U and there's a couple other ones that we can use. So um, yeah, I'll let you know when we get to that. Okay. Um, here's a, an example of, uh, I like this because it gives you um, an example of the, uh, a um, commercial building such as what you we would have um, back at Delgado in, um, in school because we have our drop they have our drop ceiling here and the this is the plenum the space between the actual uh, ceiling the actual roof and the drop ceiling itself and this in a commercial building is where you're going to be running all your ducts and things like that so here we have the diffuser it's the air supply this will, this is where you'll see all that duct work going uh, as we start laying everything out in our buildings um, also they they have this to can take into consideration how you have the sun beating in here so um, once again it's a lot of different things that we want to take into consideration while we are creating our uh, hvac system yes. All right, this is just going to give you a little example of how the systems are going to be running, what we're going to be doing. Um, you can see that this is a very simple one-way um, duct system. It comes off of the main um, unit and it has the larger ducts and we will have the smaller ducts running off of there. This one is a, a two-way system. I'll be showing you more examples of how these systems run uh, before we draw them because it's a good thing to uh, have an idea of what we're actually going to be creating before we draw it. But this is just gives you some ideas how those are going to work. And um, yeah, you may want to review these, this section right here. And then there's different parts of the AC system. We're not going to be working with all of these different parts, um, but probably a large percentage of them we will be, like this duct work, uh, the service plenum, uh, the return air, and uh, the venting. And these are just gonna, I just want you to review these when you get a chance, you get an idea of how these systems actually work. How we have our exhausted air, the intake air, the fan that's gonna circulate the air and the air that will, the vents that pick up the return air right here. So once again, you can just see it's kind of a closed loop and all those different loops um, describe the different types of cooling systems, how they cool the air. 
and you can review this one as well. It's just kind of the same thing. Um, as long as you know that's a basically it's a, um, a chilled loop system where the air goes comes into the unit, it gets chilled and it gets forced out and it gets circulate circulates back into the other unit. And so we have many different examples of that here. This is going to look similar to what we're going to be drawing in a Revit. And we have some other systems here. And you see there's a lot of information on here, so take your time uh, to actually kind of go through this and study it. It's going to make more sense as we start, you know, working on it. Uh, and it is a great reference guide for you to just kind of refer back to and uh, see how we're going to be doing it. So ours is going to look something like this. This is done in Revit. And you can see that there uh, is a return air and also the air, um, <clears throat> the supply air as well. That's some more. Okay. So take your time, read through that uh, up until midterm. If you've got questions on it, just write them down and catch me in the next class and we can review that. So. So the main thing that we're going to be working on uh, for this week, that's going to be due Sunday evening, um, are going to be duck, uh, are going to be calculations. Um, we go ahead and open MET, MEP floor plan one and two. This is the floor plans that we are going to be working off of for this um, project. They're um, commercial buildings. It's a two-story, very straightforward. Um, That's better. Let me download that. Did you want us to like replicate that or something? Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that. I just want you to open it right now so we can talk about it. And go ahead and open both of them, MEP one and MEP two floor plan one and floor plan two, then you can download them. And I'm gonna explain what we need to do with them. So this is what the first project is gonna look like, um, what we're gonna start off at, but, and what we're gonna be using this for to start with is to do our calculations on each room. Those calculations you can find under HVAC calculations in your files. So go ahead and open that as well, please. This is going to explain to you how that works. I'll go ahead and download that too. And then also go ahead and open uh, HVAC spreadsheet and duct sizing. We're gonna have work on all these. That should be, yeah, close that. And duct sizing sheet. I think I already have that open. There we go. Okay. All right. So, what are we going to do with all this stuff? Well, in order to actually um, get your correct measurements and calculations and loads, we need to take a look at the floor plan. We'll go ahead and just look at the first one. And we also want to take a look at the HVAC calculations. Now, in order to get the proper unit that we need for our building, we need to calculate how big the building is, and that will allow us to determine what size unit we need to get uh, in order to properly air condition our building. So the first thing you want to do on your HVAC calculations is to have things I think pretty much well um, stepped out for you here is we want to determine the size of the unit that you'll need. Um, in order to do that, we're going to use the overall building measurements. So in order to do that, we're going to go back <clears throat> to the floor plan one and take a close look at the floor plan, study it, see if you can figure it out. It's very straightforward on here. Uh, notice that this is 102 feet by 52 feet. The wall thickness on here is one foot. So it's very thick walls on the outside, which are one foot thick, which would leave you for a calculation on your interior walls at 100 foot by 50 foot. 
So that's the actual area of the inside of this building for the first floor and second floor is 100 feet by 50 feet. So in order to determine uh, the size of the unit, we want to use this calculation right here. The AC size is determined by the square root times the area divided, what the heck? That is not supposed to happen. The square root by the area uh, divided by the height. <clears throat> For example, if we had a length of a one room of a length of 14 feet, width of 17 feet and height of 10 feet, um, we would do the square root of 14 times seven and divide that by 10. So for here we do 14 times 17, gives us 238, you get the square root of that which gives us the 15.42 right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and divide that by 10. Whoops. 10. Which will give us the 1.5. That's gonna give you the actual ton size that you need for your air conditioner. Air conditioners are measured in tons or BTUs. Uh, you'll hear people be like, oh, I need like a five ton unit from a house. Or you, sometimes depending on the size of the house, you may need more than one unit. And once we get into like the really larger ones, we were looking at more of an industrial size unit that you'll use. But this gives you an idea of how to work that. So use this very simple calculation to create, um, to get your ton size. And that is also translated, I have over here, what that equals is BTUs. So you'll hear BTUs is also, which um, BTUs means British thermal units. So just with this very small room, which is a 14 by 17 room with height of 10 foot ceilings, you need a 1.5 ton uh, air conditioning unit, which gives us 18,000 BTUs. So in order to calculate the size of the unit we will need for, come on, get away. For this building, it's 100 by 50, so you will calculate, 100 times 50 right here to get the area, get the square root of that and divide that by 10. So very straightforward how to get the size of the unit that you'll use. Along with the size of the unit, we need the size of the ductwork that we're gonna be running. This will give you the calculations for the size of the ductwork. I started a spreadsheet. I gave you an example of it there, but it didn't translate really well, but you can just, you can still use that as a, a beginning on how to create a spreadsheet. But I found in teaching this class in the past, the easiest way for to help people keep track of all of their work is to create an HVAC spreadsheet. And if you use, um, if you do it similar to this, so for each room, list the room numbers, list the stairway, like stair one and, and hallway one as well and calculate the area of each space. Um, I went ahead and have done that for you for room 102. So if we look at room 102 right here, that is 45 foot by 20 foot, which gives me an area of 900. Once I have that figure, the area itself, I can come back to my duct sizing sheet and take this area, which is equivalent to my cubic feet per minute, and come down here. This is gonna help me get my duct sizing. So at 900, I can come over, and these are the various duct sizes that I can use for this, um, for this unit, for this, for this particular room. So if I go up here, this is my vent size that I would need. So um, you have the option with a 900 square foot room to have a six inch vent, which doesn't really make a lot of sense up to a 12 inch vent, but that all also corresponds with the size of the ductwork as well. So these are the vents up here, the vent sizes, and these are your duct sizes. So what I would recommend for this, 900 foot room is I would recommend the 12 inch vents. 
I pick the vent first and then I'll come back down to, and that is a 12 by 12 inch ductwork. And then I filled that in on here. So 12 inch vent, 12 by 12 inch ductwork. And I said number of vents is six because if we place these out in here, we want this air to be equally spaced. So well, there's no hot spots in the room, which is why we picked six vents for this room. Uh, I do two vents for this one, four vents for this one. I'll let y'all decide as you go through the rest of the calculations how you'd like to have that worked out. Um, we'll put one vent in each, uh, well, actually, we'll put one vent in the stairwell on the second floor, uh, not on the first floor, and then we won't put any vents in the hallway, but we still want to calculate that floor size when we do it. Uh, the HVAC room, um, we don't need to put a vent in there. Uh, the HVAC, obviously all our hardware will be stored in this room and things like that, but we'll go into how to lay it out a little bit uh, in, in more detail in uh, class on Monday. But what your assignment is for this week is to calculate, do those calculations uh, for area, figure out the vent size, vent numbers, and duct sizes of each room, and then um, determine the size of the unit that you'll need. So all math is very straightforward. Uh, it's very easy. And um, yeah, I don't think uh, you shouldn't have any trouble with it. If not, if you are having trouble, you can paint, you can um, text me or shoot me an email and we'll kind of go through it or just turn it in and we can grade it from there. Uh, but before we're actually able to draw anything, we need to have these calculations done. Um, any questions about that, y'all? Okay, cool. Uh, so that's pretty much it for today. Um, like I said, review those uh, sheets that I've given you. Here, everything that you need is available in um, files under um, Fall 2020 MEP under HVAC. Everything's in here um, that you need to go ahead and get started on that. Um, go ahead and when you're ready when you're finished everything the easiest thing is to put that on that um, Excel spreadsheet in your mods we have mod one HVAC one and I just have everything listed in here so once you're finished those calculations go ahead and upload them um, for this mod one and that way I can get you a grade on that. Um, and then we will use these calculations to go ahead and start our work on, uh, on Monday. Uh, one last thing I wanted to talk about Revit wise. So much stuff. Bro, how far apart do you want us to space out the, um, the vents? Well, uh, you, I, I want you to take a guess at that. So it's not necessarily a, um, so it's not you like would a need to take into a few things into consideration. If you don't feel comfortable guessing the number of vents that you need in each room, don't worry about it. We can talk about that on Monday, um, but we will have that laid out for Monday. So just go ahead and don't worry about the number of vents. Just do the calculations. We'll talk about how to space them out on Monday. Okay. That'd probably be better for y'all. Yeah, skip that and we'll fill that in on Monday. So when you, um, you should have Revit on your computer by now. Um, I've had some people tell me that there's some issues with Revit and MEP at the moment. So what I, um, what I want you to do is make sure that we have a template that says mechanical on it. As long as there's a mechanical template within uh, your Revit, we should be fine. Um, I'm having some issues with it as well, and as some other students are. So let me show you what that is. And what I've been told is that we need to reinstall Revit on our computers um, in order to make sure that everything is working, especially for mechanical. It's not so not so bad with architectural. I can work with y'all, those of you who are in that class, but for mechanical, we really do need to have that working. So what does that mean for y'all? That means when we come over here, and we go to, this is the, the main screen for Revit. When we come over to new and we click on here, how it says new project, we should have template files available here. They should say 
architectural, structural, um, systems, uh, mechanical, uh, things like that. So if you if your Revit looks like mine does right now and it does not have any templates available, go ahead and uh, uninstall it from your computer and then reinstall it. Um, Ms. A said that should solve the problem and make sure everything gets um, loaded in. I'm going to be doing that. So if you still have any problem with that next week, we can go ahead and um, work on it then.